All right, everyone ready for a talk on the gut microbiome? Yeah, I got some excitement. All right. So before we even get started on the gut microbiome, uh, my name is Andrew Chung. I'm a board-certified ophthalmologist, and I'm also certified in lifestyle medicine. Now that we've got that out the way, let's get to the exciting part. When you think about the gut microbiome, you don't always think of it as being a part of your immune system. But what is the gut microbiome? You know, sometimes in science we use these advanced words, microbiome and all these other crazy long words that no one else understands. Well, imagine for a second with me that it's a starry night outside, you're looking up in the sky, it's beautiful stars, there's the galaxy you can see, you can see uh, planets. And what does it inspire in you? Maybe a sense of awe, wonder, mystery, all the mysteries that are out there. What is that? Well, guess what? While there's a universe out there, there's also kind of a universe right inside our gut. Did you know that? And that's what we call the gut microbiome. Now, for a second, walk with me. We're going to call it gut universe. Is that OK? Gut universe? OK. Because gut universe has an intimate relationship with how your immune system works. So let's walk through it, because this is going to be important for us to have the best immune function. So to establish some baselines, number one, did you know that 70% of your immune system is actually in your gut? 70%. That means most of our immune system is actually in the gut. But even though there's 70% in there, did you know that the microbes, such as the fungi and the bacteria and even viruses naturally contained inside of us, outnumber our white blood cells by about one white blood cell to a few hundred thousand microbes. So it's the equivalent of me playing security for about a few filled stadiums of this size. Do you think that's a huge task for one, one immune cell to take care of? It is. Not only that, every day we expose these immune cells to foreigners. And you know where those foreigners come from? our food every single day. But thankfully, there's some helpers in the microbiome. And there's three categories of individuals in the gut microbiome or in gut universe. Number one is the symbiont. And the symbiont has a mutual relationship. And so when you eat, the symbiont eats, he's happy, and he returns the favor by giving us vitamins, minerals, things that were in the food that are valuable to us. You follow that? So we have the symbionts, and those are ones you want to have an abundance in your gut microbiome. But number two, he's called the opportunistic pathogen. Opportunistic meaning he waits for an opportunity to do damage. So normally he won't cause damage, but if there's a suppression of the immune function, He'll take advantage of that opportunity. Anybody want an opportunistic pathogen in there? You don't want those in abundance, but they naturally are in our bodies. Number three is called the pathobiont. And the pathobiont, he's going to go ahead and cause trouble regardless of the situation. The pathobiont is all about causing disease for the sake of himself. So that's gut universe. That's the kind of residence you have going on right inside your intestinal tract. So what does all of this have to do with our immune function? Well, did you know that your immune cell naturally won't respond to every foreign thing that comes into your gut or into your body? Because if it did, then every time you ate, you would be having a major reaction to your food. And some of us are having reactions to our foods. That's called food sensitivities. Well. The main thing that controls whether or not your immune system is actually going to respond to a foreign threat is your gut microbiome. And if your gut microbiome is not in good health, then it won't signal your immune system to get ramped up until an infection is very severe. Sound like an important role for the gut microbiome? Absolutely. So, the question is, how can I have a microbiome, how can I have gut universe so healthy that it naturally signals to my immune system to get active when it needs to get active? Well, the one thing 
that we can easily control is what we put in our mouth. You see, every time we eat something, it influences our gut microbiome, whether we like it or not, in a bad way or in a good way. And so how can I create a gut microbiome that's healthy, that's going to support my immune system properly? What do I have to eat? If you look at foods, you can categorize them into two main categories, foods that you don't want to eat for a healthy gut microbiome and foods that you definitely want to eat. So we're going to go into those foods that you don't want to eat. Food number one, processed foods. If you don't know what processed foods is, when you go to your grocery, about 70% of the food you get exposed to is processed food. So one example is sugar. We all know eating sugar suppresses our immune system. And a big part of that is its role in the impact on our microbiome. It changes the type of organisms and microbes growing in there. The second food is animal products. Unfortunately, our animal life has been exposed to many antibiotics and many different exposures such as pesticides. And when we eat these things, we eat these animal products, we ourselves are getting exposed to those antibiotics and those pesticides. And you know what that does to bacteria? Antibiotics kill bacteria. And so it totally changes the gut microbiome. The final food you want to avoid or limit as much as possible is vegetable oils. When I bring this up, people say, what about my olive oil or my avocado oil? Did you know when you heat oil, it loses all nutritional value and instead becomes a carcinogen, which means cancer causing? And so avoiding these oils. So then if I can't eat those things, what can I eat to have a healthy gut microbiome? You know what the answer is? It's very simple. A diet high in fiber. No, don't run to go get some Metamucil from the store. Actually, you can get fiber. Fiber, by definition, comes from plants. And that's why you were given a totally plant-based meal today. It's because we want to help support your gut microbiome in a healthy way. Because one, fiber feeds the good bacteria. And naturally, if you're eating more fiber, you're starving the bad bugs inside. Second thing is, the best diet is a low oil, whole food, plant-based diet. Not only would it help support your immune system and your gut microbiome, it actually has been shown to reverse most chronic diseases. Some other things is avoid over-sterilization. During this pandemic, I saw people asking questions about, hey, when I take my produce home, I bought organic, non-GMO, but I got my Lysol out and I sprayed it down. You don't want to do that because you're going to be consuming what you put on your food. So my advice to you today is take care of gut universe because whether we like it or not, gut, when we take care of gut universe, it's able to support us in the fight against infections. And this will not be the first one in history. We're constantly exposed to these things, so we want to support our God-given system. Thank you.